Hey, Stargazers, welcome back. My name is Nick. I'm a theaters manager at the Adler Planetarium, and you're watching Skywatch Weekly. Well, this week, we're getting excited for the Perseid meteor shower, which peaks next Tuesday night into Wednesday morning. Meteor showers are a great sky watching experience. I like them because you don't need binoculars or a telescope to see what's happening. It's occurring basically over the entire sky. And I also like it because it's a little bit unpredictable. You know the shower is happening, but you don't know quite when or where the next meteor is going to suddenly appear and flash across the sky. So what can you expect to see? Well, meteors are quick streaks of light in the sky caused by small bits of debris hitting Earth's atmosphere. Most of these bits are about the size of a grain of sand, and they're traveling about 40 miles per second. They glow briefly as they hit the upper atmosphere, become incandescent from the heat of friction, and then fade quickly as they burn up. Most meteors you see are about 40 to 60 miles above Earth's surface. Interestingly, they're seen by astronauts on the space station as well. That's a pretty cool view as they get to see meteors occurring below them as the ISS orbits about 240 miles up. On any given night during the year, you can expect to see a meteor, sometimes called a shooting star, maybe once every five minutes in a perfectly dark, clear sky. During meteor showers, though, that number goes up. So you might see one every one or two minutes, or in some cases, you'll see several per minute. It might not sound like a lot, but if you're out looking for an hour, you can potentially see dozens of meteors during a good shower. So when and where should you look? Well, honestly, you could go out tonight and probably see some Perseid meteors, but the peak when the most meteors will be visible is the night of August 11th into the morning of August 12th. You can start watching once the sky gets dark on Tuesday night, a little over an hour after sunset. But the real show will pick up after midnight, when the constellation of Perseus starts climbing higher in the sky. We haven't talked about Perseus before, but he's in the northeast later in the night this time of year, and follows Cassiopeia as she climbs over the horizon. By about 10.30 here in Chicago, you'll see Cassiopeia well up in the northeast. The bright star Capella just climbing over the horizon, and in between the stars of Perseus, the hero. So why August 12th, and why does Perseus have a meteor shower named after him? Well, it all has to do with comets. We just saw the beautiful comet Neowise in our skies. But the Perseids are related to a comet we've known about for a lot longer. Its name is Swift-Tuttle. Comet Swift-Tuttle has been observed in the skies for centuries, but its relationship to the Perseids, along with comets to meteor showers in general, wasn't discovered until the late 1800s. As comets orbit the sun, they leave a trail of dust and debris in their wake. The larger bits of debris remain in the same orbit as the comet, in an ever-widening swath of comet rubble. If these debris clouds intersect the orbit of Earth, as is the case with Comet Swift-Tuttle, we experience meteor showers. This occurs every year around August 12th for the Perseids. This is when Earth moves into the debris cloud and the most meteors per hour can be seen. Meteor showers are named for the parts of the sky the meteors appear to come from. All of the Perseid meteors will appear to point back to the constellation of Perseus. So when you see a meteor, trace its path back across the sky, and if that points to Perseus, you'll know you saw a Perseid. The meteors aren't really originating from that constellation. It's a trick of perspective, similar to how railroad tracks appear to converge in the distance. The area of the sky the meteors appear to radiate from is called the Radiant. There are some other well-known showers, like the Leonids in November, which has a Radiant in Leo the Lion, and the Geminids in December with a Radiant in the Gemini Twins. Well, both of those are cold weather showers here in the Northern Hemisphere, but the Perseids are ideally timed, so you can count on a reasonably warm night to lie out and see some meteors. 
The Perseids are a very reliable shower, so every year around August 12th, you can expect to see some meteors. Now the phase of the moon does have a big effect though, as its light will drown out the faintest meteors. Last year in 2019, it was a very full moon during the Perseid shower, so not as many were seen. This year, we have a waning crescent moon that will be rising pretty much just as the peak is occurring, so it's not ideal conditions, but estimates of maybe 50 to 70 meteors per hour are expected, especially in the hour or so right before dawn begins. Now, keep in mind, that's across the whole sky. You don't just want to stare at Perseus and wait. Ideally, you'll lie down on a blanket in an open field and look up. Find the darkest, most open area you can and look up as high as is comfortable, which of course is easier if you're lying down or reclining. It's a great experience for groups as well, so think about maybe a socially distanced meteor watching outing. As you're looking up, you'll be treated to views of the summer sky we've been talking about in videos over the past few weeks, with Jupiter and Saturn down near Sagittarius and Scorpius. The summer triangle dominating the top of the sky and bright Arcturus off the handle of the Big Dipper. Now you want to save the stargazing apps for later though. You're going to want your eyes on the sky and as dark adapted as possible to catch the Perseids. Even if you're in light polluted skies, you can still expect to see some. I've seen many meteors here in Chicago, although you will need a little bit more patience as you wait. The dimmer ones will be drowned out, but keep in mind there are some very bright meteors that can occur, especially with the Perseids. Most of the pieces of debris hitting the atmosphere are actually too small to create visible light. But the ones we do see as sort of the faintest meteors, those are about the size of a grain of sand. As the pieces get bigger than that, bigger than about a millimeter across, they'll be much, much brighter, possibly brighter than Jupiter is in the sky right now. These very bright meteors have a, a very cool name, fireballs, and the Perseid meteor shower is particularly well known for producing them. So my challenge for you this week, get out there and see some meteors. It doesn't have to be at two in the morning next Wednesday. Just get out there and look this week. Look up, get as big a part of the sky as you can, the darkest sky you can possibly get to, and be patient. Wait for it. And if you're lucky, you'll catch that quick flash of light. And of course, be sure to let us know what you saw. Well, that's what we've got for you this week. Happy meteor hunting. As always, thank you so much for watching. Don't forget to subscribe and look up with us every Wednesday. Let us know what you thought in the comments and also any topics you'd like to discover as well in upcoming videos. Also follow the Adler Planetarium on social media. Thank you so much for watching and we'll see you next week.